Welcome back to our video series. In the last video, we drew our circuit in Designer, but we did not configure it, which led to several validation errors and warnings. We will begin this video by addressing these validation issues, and then we'll configure the rest of the circuit. Configuring a circuit can be a simple process as long as you understand the general workflow and the meaning of various settings. Next to the Errors and Warnings tab, you see additional tabs described as attributes. This is where you enter the device, team, and substation settings. I highly recommend starting with the Device Attributes tab and working your way right till you complete the last tab. This way, you won't miss any important setting. In this video, I won't go into a lot of detail about each setting and will only focus on the main ones used to configure this circuit. For more information about each specific setting, please read the IntelliTeam Designer User's Guide. Let's get started. Click the Device Attributes tab. This area is used to configure device-related settings such as the RTU address, IP address, and serial numbers. Let's go ahead and configure the RTU addresses and IP addresses for each device. Next, select the serial number for each device. It's important to select the correct one because serial numbers are associated with licenses and, depending on the license you select, not all applications may be supported. For example, our circuit has three sources, which is only supported by gold licenses. Designer would generate a validation error if a bronze or silver license was selected. Click the Validate button again. As long as there are no issues with the drawing, the Errors and Warnings tab should now be clear. Next, click the Team Attributes tab. This is where you configure the settings related to each team of devices. The first two columns display the team identifiers, which are generated during the validation process. The IntelliTeam Options Enabled setting is used to select which IntelliTeam features to enable. Since we plan on using rapid self-healing, but not phase loss isolation, let's select ITSG with rapid self-healing. Next, click the Team Member Attributes tab. Like in the previous tab, these settings are also team-related, but specific to each individual device. The Max Capacity setting is used to set the maximum amount of load each team member can carry. Since our power lines can only carry up to 500 amps, these fields need to be adjusted. Go ahead and replace each field with a value of 500. The Return to Normal Mode setting serves two purposes. It allows the user to configure a manual return to normal or an automatic return to normal. If automatic, the user must select between an open or closed transition return. Let's set this to closed for each team member. Next, click the Team Customer Counts tab. These settings are used specifically for the IntelliTeam FMS application to generate reliability calculations based on the number of residential, commercial, industrial, and any other customer we have in each team. We won't be using FMS with our system, so let's proceed to the next tab. Click the Substation Attributes tab. These settings are used to set the capacity limits for each source. Overloading our sources is a concern, so let's go ahead and leave this setting enabled. Also, let's keep the defaults of 600 amps of capacity. Click on the last tab, Substation Team Attributes. A substation team, also referred to as a subteam, is the area between the source and its nearest device as depicted 
by the ST labels in the drawing. Just like we did with the team members, set all the subteams to ITSG with rapid self healing. If the device nearest the source is installed in the substation, then select the first device and substation checkbox. In our case, the Intelruptor and the Vista switch are both installed in the field, but the IntelliNode is installed on the substation breaker. So let's select the checkbox next to that source. Finally, validate the settings and save the circuit. Congratulations, we are done configuring the circuit. Stay tuned to the next video to learn how to communicate to the devices and push the settings.